Oh, good morning, everybody. So, I brought Tank downstairs with me, so if I disappear at some point, it's because he got anxious and I had to bring him upstairs. He is currently, make it dizzy, right there. I had to get him up onto the chair because he was pacing because he's not sure where he is. Some of you may not know this, but he's blind now. So, and I'm wearing my totally unflattering, but incredibly warm, comfy, but I'm gonna take it off in a minute because I'll be too hot, but I was cold upstairs. So, today's practice is really in a spit some way to get me moving because I never left the couch yesterday. I kind of would be in a mopey dope and I drank wine, fell asleep, and it was just basically a waste of the day. And I didn't take very good care of myself. So today I'm gonna take better care of myself. And so we're gonna do some yoga together. So, um, <laughs> it's all cozy. So I'll take off my, my walking blanket in just a moment, but just take a pause and let yourself sit in a position that's comfortable for you. And maybe that's laying down, maybe that's child's pose. Just just be in the moment, just be still and take a moment just to pause. You know, settling in from the energy of the storm, it's still really windy, it's gonna get icy. You know, maybe letting yourself have some time to get a bit more grounded. And just let yourself, just take a handful of breaths, whether through your nose or through your mouth, just to, to settle down. Um, if I do have any issues with the internet, I'm gonna to cut out at all you want to just turn it off and then come back later I'll post the video because when I post them later there's no pause if there is any issues but whew, I'm already getting hot in my little in my comfy and so when you're ready we're going to actually come on to our backs we're going to do a little bit to warm up the low back so take a second if you want to unwind your legs a little bit or anything go right ahead and if you do have layers on you might even want to keep them on for a moment just because we'll be closer to the floor I see baby Yoda in the background too and then let yourself just come down towards your back. And then just take a moment with your knees wide, your feet together. Just coming into Baddha Konasana with my big ass buttocks. And just take a moment just letting your legs drop open. And you can let yourself bring your hands to your belly if you wish. Sorry, I'm cushioning my head because my banana clip is pushing into my head. And then just let your arms come out like a T. And then draw your knees in, hug your knees up and into your belly. And then just let your legs drop off to one side. It doesn't matter which one first. And then come on through the center and then off the opposite side. And then here, just go side to side a couple times. I'm hovering my legs to activate my belly a little bit more, but you could let your legs drop down to the ground if you wanted it to be a little bit more restorative. And then as you start to go back and forth, I like to start to take the legs wider and more from the hip opening perspective. You could keep them closer together to make it more core. And then eventually I start to lengthen the legs just to start to wake up the inner and outer thighs. Trying to keep my feet straight as I'm going side to side. And then the next time your legs drop to the right, just pause there for a moment. And then if you'd like, press into your right arm to kind of draw your right shoulder out. You might gaze over the left shoulder. I'm not forcing my top leg to go all the way down. It's hovering a little bit. And if I wanted to soften it even more than that, I could bend the knee. watching tank he's behind the camera and then as you inhale bring your legs up through the center and drop over towards the left you might need to readjust pressing into the left arm to draw your shoulder out to try to help bring your right shoulder more towards the ground close the eyes soften the belly you might look over the right shoulder because of the curve in my back my head doesn't like turning this way as much so I'm kind of letting it be supportive And then come back through the center. Just take your right leg straight up to the sky, left foot's on the floor. And then just cross your left ankle, or excuse me, your right ankle over your left thigh, just coming into a figure four. And then you can either keep the knees down or draw them in towards your chest. Instead of using my arms to hold in, I'm trying to activate my low belly. And by keeping the feet pretty active, that helps protect your knees too. And then just tip the whole thing over towards the left so your right foot comes down to the ground. If you hold on to your foot, it's going to help give a deeper stretch into your glute. Or if you just want to let the knee drop forward, that'll open up your inner thigh. My pants are sliding down, let's go. Fix up my pants. And then inhale, come on through the center. Let your legs drop over to the right, but you might need to move your left foot out of the way a bit. So you can just let yourself sink in. Soften your jaw. 
And then when you're ready, just come on into the center. Take your right foot down to the floor. This time, take your left leg up to the sky. Switch your hands. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And then either keep the legs right on the ground or draw them in. Again, I'm using the low belly to help kind of activate through the legs, but you could use your arms if you wanted it to be a little bit less passive or less um, active in the belly, a little more passive. And then let your legs tip over towards the right. You can hold onto your left foot to kind of keep it in place, get a little bit of a deeper stretch in the glute and hamstring. And then just let the whole thing tip up and over to the left. And you might need to move your right foot out of the way so your knees can drop down. Good boy, Pink. And then just nice and easy, bring your legs back up to the center. Take a moment here, you can just draw both knees into your belly. And just kind of let yourself have a little rock of your back on the ground. And then some people like rolling forward and back. It's not always my favorite thing. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. So this morning, I'm going to roll to the side. But feel free if you want to rock back and forth. I'll take off my, my walking blanket. It's a birthday present for my, my brother and my sister-in-law. And I love this thing. It is warm enough to wear outside like a coat. <laughs> and then coming to hands and knees. So take a moment, and if you need a second, just to kind of stretch out your legs a bit or feel a press of your heel into the ground, feel free to do so. But then eventually coming back into the shape of hands and knees. And I keep my hands on blocks just to help support my thumb. Uh oh here comes Tank. If I disappear for a second, it's just because I wanted to bring him upstairs so he won't pace. But Start to let yourself round your spine, coming into cat's breath. And then drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the tail. Thank you, bud. Come over here. Letting yourself coil in and up around the spine of the sky. And then drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the tail. As you coil up in, and this time, take a moment to pause. Push the ground away with your hands and with your shins and draw your belly button back to your spine. And then just let yourself come into a neutral spine, a long spine. Press down into your left hand, take the right arm up to the sky. Just simple thread the needle. Let the right arm come underneath the left. You can press into your left hand if you'd like. Sometimes it feels good to bring your hand to your low back, or you might even want to lengthen the left leg out to the side. Just feel free if there's any variation you like to do it. Give it another breath where you are. And then just let your left hand press down. Take the right arm and reach it up to the sky. And then right arm comes on down. Hi, Bobo. Left arm comes up to the sky. Here comes the right way. Keep coming. Left hand comes underneath the right, letting your head and your shoulders sink down towards the ground. Just giving yourself a moment just to be kind of heavy. Any variation for the right arm is great. And then nice and easy. Start to press down into the right hand, take the left arm up to the sky. And then bring both hands down to the mat, and then just come back into the shape of cat and cow. So hollow out the belly, and then drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the tail. So if you didn't hear me say it earlier, Tank is blind now, huh? has a diabetes. Unfortunately, he developed cataracts, and he lost his vision about a month ago or so. So that's why if he's bumping into things, there's nothing wrong other than the obvious. <laughs> Give yourself a chance to stretch the belly, now when you're ready here, curl the toes under, and just work your way up and back in a downward facing dog. And just take a moment, you can let your head drop in, a little sway of the hip. So, okay. Good. And walk out your legs if you want to walk out your legs a bit. And just giving yourself a moment just to kind of, to be here, to be in this space, and start to wake up the shoulders. I'm playing a little bit with moving the ribs, kind of like the cat and cow shape while I'm in this space. He likes baby Yoda too. Oops, doing okay. Doing okay. And then from here, just start to let your feet come to your hands or your hands come to your feet. Whatever's more comfortable. Just take a moment to take a forward fold. And you can just let your arms relax. And whether you're holding opposite elbow or just letting your hands drape down to the ground, just letting the weight of your upper body stretch your hamstrings a bit. Ooh, cutie. And then when you are ready, you're going to start to draw yourself all the way up to standing. So you can roll the spine, a long spine, but letting yourself <coughs> come all the way up. <coughs> it's a disaster. 
take a second just to stretch off to one side. It doesn't matter which side first. <coughs> Sorry. And then come on up and over, letting yourself switch sides. And then come back into the center and just let your hands come around to your low back. And then just lift the heart, drop the tail. Try to keep your neck a little bit more on the neutral side rather than letting your head collapse back. And then when you're ready from here, just exhale, let yourself forward fold, just bow in. Inhale, come towards a halfway lift. On the exhale, just let yourself come back into a high plank position, just letting yourself pause. Spin your heels to the right or lower the right shin down, but try to keep both hands down for the moment. Try to keep your chest really rolling to the floor so it's working your right oblique. And then flip your heels over towards the left. And if it hurts you to roll over your toes, just flip, flip your feet. Letting yourself try to keep the hips slightly higher than the shoulders. You can feel your obliques kick in. Head up. And then come on through the center. Okay. And then just take a moment. Come on into downward facing dog. You can stay there. Yeah. You're okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking to see what you were going to do. That's what I figured. <laughs> Step your right foot forward. Just come on into a knee down lunge, letting yourself take a moment to pause. And left hand can come to your left hip. Just sweep the right arm up and over. If you can comfortably reach the floor or a block or your bubble, you're welcome to do that too. And then just let the right arm circle down. Let the right hand come down to your hip, the block, the floor, your dog. Let the left arm slide up and over. And then just let both hands come to the low back. Drop the hips and then just lift your heart. And if you'd rather, you can bring your hands to the top of your thigh, just starting to open up the front of your left quad a little bit. Oh, good. And then let your hands come on down, and then we're just gonna pull back and lengthen the right leg. And you might have to readjust a little bit, trying to, at the moment, to keep your left hip over your left knee. And then give yourself a chance to kind of flex and point the foot, maybe just let the ball of the foot drop from side to side, whatever feels good for you. Then from here, let yourself bend into the right knee. Now, I'm just gonna pick up my back foot, swing it behind me, and that's mostly for balance. And then inhale, draw yourself up. Let your left hand come on down. It might be to the hip, down to the ground. You can straighten the right leg if you wish. And then come on up and over like you're coming towards the shape of side ankle. Now inhale, come back up. Now we're gonna make this even a little bit more stretchy. And if you have to move differently to protect your knees, go ahead, or to avoid kicking your dog, whatever you need. So we're gonna slide the right leg out long and keep the left leg in half frog. So letting yourself kind of shift, I'm just moving some on the tail, and letting yourself drop in. Now if you need a little less, you can keep your heel of the uh, left foot more towards your glute, so it's more like child's pose, or you can let the inside of your foot come to the floor like frog. Having that right leg bent or straight. Hey, over there. I know, I'm right here. I'm right here. Give another grab at your bed. No, no, you the wall. <laughs> Give another grab at you. Sorry, this is why he hasn't been coming down when I've been doing this. And then when you're ready to, just let your hands slide up underneath you. Draw the upper body high, slide that left knee in. And then just let yourself pick up the right leg, bend into the right knee, and just for a moment, just lean up and over to the side again. So like that side angle type shape. Now when you inhale, come up, let your right hand, cuts, left hand come down, open up the right side. So going the same shape you did before, just a little deeper. And then this time when you start to come back up, just pivot all the way around to the front of the mat, swing your left foot behind you. And then from there, press up and back, down dog, just take the right leg up to the sky. Lower the right foot down to meet the left foot, and then take the left leg up to the sky. Coil the left knee up and into your belly, just stepping forward towards a lunge. Lower the right shin down, and then draw your hands up towards your waist. And then let yourself keep the left or right hand down, left arm up and over, lengthening through your side body. Circle it around, then left hand comes down, let that right arm come on up. Then let your hands come on down, lift the heart, sink the hips. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what the dog is doing. And then easy, you can let yourself exhale, bring the hands down, pull back, and lengthen your left leg. 
You can flex and point the foot or just let your foot kind of roll side to side. Think of this as just an opportunity to start to wake up your body. And as I said earlier, I just pretty much parked it on the couch yesterday and barely moved it all. And the funny thing is, is my butt kind of hurts from sitting. So <laughs> starting to ease into the stretches a little bit slower. Now, as you start to bend in towards your left knee, you might just take a second to sink in. But then here's the directional change. Let the right foot swing behind you. Inhale up, so it looks like side angle. So the first time, maybe just bring the hand to the hip. You don't have to go all the way to the ground. Just open through your left side. And then letting yourself come on up and over. Left arm comes down, right arm comes up and over. Then inhale, just come back into the center. Now here's where we end up in that kind of like half straddle, half rug. <laughs> oh, perfect, Dick. Thank you for blocking my butt. And so letting your left leg go long. You can have your right foot, so you can have the foot flex, or if you want, it can be more like a child pose. Oh, this is very nice of you. <laughs> Give it another press or two. Thank you. Yay. About two or three more breaths. And then when you're ready, you can kind of press into your hands. You might have to heel toe the foot in a little bit, the left leg. And then all you're gonna do is turn the left toes to face the front of the mat again. Just bend back into your knee. Then pull up and over so it's like that side angle type shape. And then let your right hand come down to your hip, maybe down to the ground. Just lengthening out to the left side of your body. And then this time as you draw yourself up, just turn your toes forward. Now swing the foot behind you. Just so your knee is in a safe space. And then just up and back, downward facing dog. Take the left leg up to the sky and bend the knee, open the hip. And then just nice and slow, just let yourself bring your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands, whatever's easier to move at the moment. And then inhale, come all the way up to stand. And then exhale, hands into the heart. Then here, I'm just gonna turn to face you. You can totally stay facing the direction you are. Bend the knees, draw the arms up to the sky. Now exhale, just press down, pull the right knee up, doesn't matter how high. Sink in. As you come up, pull the left knee up. Again, doesn't matter how high. Sink in. Now this time when the right leg comes up, you're going to cross it over the left. So just coming into a figure four. Tree pose is great too. You can let yourself kind of sink down over the leg, but notice that I'm pulling my chest forward and my tailbone back rather than rounding the spine. And then just depending on how happy this is in your hips, you can bring your hands down towards the ground or towards your blocks or towards your dog. Give it another breath or two. I'm glad he's relaxing. I wasn't sure if he would. And then when you're ready to inhale, come up. Pull the right knee with you for a moment. Use your belly. And then just extend it out in front. Don't worry about how high. And then just slowly release it down. Give it a little wiggle out. <laughs> I think my balance is slightly better because I'm afraid of falling on the dog. Bend the knees, draw the arms up high to the sky. Then push down, pull your left knee up. Sink in, pull the right knee up. Sink in, now this time when the left knee comes up, again, you're gonna cross it over. You could also do tree or ankle over your thigh, just like you did laying down. Again, heart forward, hips back. And that might mean you don't go as low. You can totally have yourself hands on the blocks or hands on the shins. I just wanna pet my dog, so I'm leaning in a little more. <laughs> Give another breath or so. Now when you're ready to come up, you might even bring your hands to your hips or just let them shoot up through. Draw the left knee up, extend, and then just lower your left foot down to meet the right. And then here, just facing the top of the mat. I'd be at the top, I just want to step on the dog. So inhale, scoop up, exhale, and up. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Now on the exhale, just take your right leg back to a lunge, but then this time maybe keeping the knee off the ground. Draw the arms to the sky, and you can still totally put the knee down if you prefer. Let yourself take the elbows out wide. Think like a goalpost. But now what I want you to think about also is notice here how I'm arching my back. Lengthen your tailbone down a bit, so that way your hip is kind of stacking up and there's more space between your hip crease and your thigh. Now the arms, they can stay out in this skull pose shape, or you might bring your knuckles or your hands around, wrap the elbows back, you got it, bud. And then let yourself perhaps sink in a little lower, but try to avoid the chest pushing forward. Try to keep your shoulders up over the hips. 
Then from here, let your hands come on down towards the blocks or towards the ground. Probably need to shorten your stance a little bit and just lengthen both of your legs. Now give yourself some freedom rather than staying totally still unless you just want to. Let there be a little rock with your hips. And then instead of framing up your front foot, walk your hands to the inside of your left foot and kind of let yourself rock the hips out. Now here, I can hyperextend my joints pretty easily, so I usually turn my toes in a little bit so I'm not locking out my ankle. So it's purposely giving a little bit more activation to adductors and abductors and our another thigh. Give yourself a moment just to pause. Now you can walk your hands back up around your left foot. You're going to bend in towards the left knee and then lower the right shin down to the mat. Now I confess this is going to be a little bit yucky. So top of the back foot's on the floor. See if you can pop up the shin and knee of the back foot. Now if you get there and you're okay with it, you can start to walk your hands up your thigh. If it's still okay, you might draw the arms up. So it's pretty intense on the front of the quad. And then just exhale, let your hands come on down. Swing the foot behind you as best as you can if you have an obstacle in your way. Draw <laughs> yourself up. Now, right hand comes down. I would go to the floor, but I don't want to because my knee's crooked. So left arm up and over. And then let yourself come in like you're in that side angle shape. You can start to sink a little deeper into the front hip if you want to. Just letting yourself kind of gauge where it feels right for you. And then inhale, pull yourself back up. Exhale, take the hands down. Now, if you are in blocks, you might want to be on the lowest point. Straighten the back leg behind you. As you pick up the left foot, let it roll behind you. And you might press into your feet to lift up. Now, ease yourself all the way down. So you're sitting down, right leg's extended, left knee is bent. Take a moment, give a little hug to your left knee. Just twist towards the left. And then come around. You might take a little counter pose twist towards the right. Now as you come back and around, we're going to end up in down dog with the left leg up in the air. So you can choose. You can kind of pick it up. You can start to use that to lift, or you can let yourself kind of play, press back, and then left leg to the sky. Lower the left foot down to meet the right foot, and then inhale, take the right leg to the sky. Set the right foot forward, coming into lunge. So, at first, the knee is lifted. Perhaps it doesn't have to be. And then sink in, arms high. Now again, you might even have to bring in a little bit of a bend in the back knee. And, you know, and one of the things I've noticed with my new bodacious body that's changed so much this year, that when I lengthen my tailbone, it actually looks like I'm sticking my butt out more. Think of it not where your, your beautiful focus is. Think of where your hip creases are. Because right here you can see that if I lean forward, it might look flatter back there. But here, I'm actually lengthening the tailbone down. So any variation for the arms, you can keep them up, you can take them out wide. Sink in, so starting to wake up the left quad. And then just exhale, let your hands come on down. Lengthening both legs, it might mean you end up shortening your stance a little bit. So at first, we're framing up the right leg, so a little more in the belly of the hamstring. You can let yourself kind of rock from side to side if you feel like moving. And then eventually, either with the blocks or just hands on the ground, walk both hands to the inside of your right foot. Again, I can hyperextend my ankle here, so I turn my toes in to keep my ankle in a good position. And then you can just have another little sway of your hips, of your legs. I'm looking at the bottom of Tank's feet because he keeps licking one of his feet. And he won't let me look at them. Give another breath here. Now when you're ready to, you're gonna let yourself just frame up the foot again. Give yourself a pause, I'm gonna lower down the back shin. Now the lower your chest stays here, a little bit more subtle if you need some more space. Press into the top of your foot and try to pop the shin off the floor. That might be as much as you can handle and just try to make sure your ankle doesn't get crooked. You can start to walk the hands up the thigh if you wish. And then you might even take the arms up or lean back. So give it a breath. And then when you're ready, exhale, hands down, shin down, swing your left foot behind you. Inhale up. Now I'm gonna stay high since I did on the first side for balance, but you could bring your hand to the ground and straighten the right leg if you wanted to. And then come on up and over. Right arm sinks, left arm extends. 
And if you're comfortable, you can drop in a little bit deeper here. Just be mindful of not just how it feels in your hips, but how it feels on your knees. And then inhale and draw yourself back up. Now exhale, let the hands come on down. Straighten out the left leg behind you. This is gonna be interesting, so I'm gonna scooch this way a little bit. Take your right leg up to the sky, down dog. But now here, you're gonna flip. You might take a moment of lifting up. This certainly makes you move in a more mindful way. Letting yourself sink down. Left leg is long. Right knee is bent. <laughs> and then letting yourself take a little twist. Who knew your dog could be your dristy? And then letting yourself take a counter pose twist over to the left. Now we're gonna press back up. Now you can have as much of a moment in a hover in the side plank shape, flip dog shape, just giving yourself a moment to lengthen out. And then again, gonna pull around. Down dog, taking the right leg up to the sky. And then just lower down both of your feet. And then hands to your feet or feet to your hands, just giving yourself a moment to forward fold. Take your feet about hips distance and then just hook your big toes with your fingers. Take an inhale with a halfway lift. And then just bend your elbows, belly, chest, chin, same thing. You can move your shoulders up away from your ears. One more time, a halfway lift, and then exhale, the same time. And release the hands from the feet, come all the way up to standing, draw the arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. So again, it's going to be another balancing moment if you want to be closer to a wall or anything. So bend the knees, sink in. We won't switch side to side, we'll just do it once. Take the right ankle, cross it over your left thigh, and then just let yourself sink in. Now, if it's okay, maybe fold forward and wrap your arms around your legs. If that's too small, hand to foot, foot to knee, or hand to foot, hand to knee. So you can let yourself kind of sink in. You can bend your standing leg a little bit more if you want. I'm, this is where I'm stopping because my knees are feeling a little bit off. So Amy, I'm trying to do some of this stuff to help you with your knees too. Now, take your left hand to left hip. As you start to come up, maybe catch your right foot with your right hand, and then either pull the leg up, bent, or if you want to try to straighten it, straighten it. Maybe hover it. And then just let the right foot come down to meet the left. Just walk it off for a second. I tell you, him being there is really helping my balance because I'm terrified to fall off. <laughs> and then pull your left knee up, crossing your left ankle over your right thigh, and then sink in. Now you might find on one side you have more or less space, so just let yourself have some room. You can wrap your arms around your leg, giving yourself a moment just to pause. <laughs> Not feeling as steady on this side, so that's why I'm keeping one hand down. I am still trying to pull my heart forward and my hips back though. Now when you start to come up, right hand to right hip, maybe left hand to left foot. Draw up, you can keep your knee bent. Maybe extend it. If you'd rather just try to hover it. <laughs> and then left foot just comes down to meet the right foot. Excellent. And then when you're ready, top of the mat. Now, we're going to step the left leg back first in case that makes any difference in what you're doing. So inhale, sweep up high. Exhale, and forward fold. Inhale, a halfway lift. Now left foot back. Coming in this time to warrior one. So the difference is just grounding your heel. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Now just for a moment, you can let your hands come to your hips if you'd like. So one of the things that's come to light in my practice since I hurt my knee last year was that I have a tendency to hyperextend my back leg. So sometimes it can be hypermobile in the front leg in some of the poses, but like here, I'm locking my knee. So I've started to give it a smidge of a bend, which to you may not even look like it's bending at all. To me, I feel like I'm in a lunge almost. But then squeeze the glute, squeeze the can hamstring quad, working through my calf, and then I might still try to push the heel back a little bit more, but I'm much more engaged. So I'm in um, activation and not just flexibility. And it may or may not mean you can square your chest to the front of the room. 
Now from there, maybe take your left arm up to the sky, and then just let your left hand come to the top of the right thigh, and then maybe the right arm comes up. Then the right arm can come, and it might just rest at your low back, and just think of it, you're not trying to force your chest to come forward, but see if maybe with the pressure of your hands, you can try to keep your chest square to the front of the mat. Now, I could sink deeper into this right quadricep, but quite frankly, I'm happy where I am. But if you want to try to have your knee and your hip you know, more even, that's your call. Now, from here, inhale, draw both arms up to the sky for a moment, maybe even gaze up. And then just exhale, let your hands come on down. Lengthen out through the right leg. Now, we're going to take a little funky twist here that I learned from my friend Trisha. I'm not sure where she got it from, but I think it's fun. Left hand is staying down. Right hand is coming back towards your left leg. Now, depending on you, that might be the extent of it. You could just let your left fingertips come forward or try to hold on to your right foot and look underneath your left arm. And I know that might be a lot if you're trying to do this while you're watching. So if you're not sure, just look forward if you want to for a moment. Just think of it as a, kind of like you're doing triangle but with your hands twisted. You just have the right hand at the other leg. And then here, unwind for a second. Just give yourself a moment to pause. And then just turn to face the long edge of your mat, bending your left knee, your back knee. And then come on up and over and bend your right knee. Now, as you bend your left knee, pause there for a moment. Take your right hand down. The left hand can come to your hip or up to the sky. So this is kind of like that half frog, half straddle. Now you're just standing. And then as you come over your right toes, this time coming into more of your two feet, but perhaps keeping your right hand down towards the ground, so in side angle. Now, I, I have my hands on the block. It can be on the block or on the ground, either side of your leg. Sometimes I like doing behind the foot, which is more traditional anyway, because it gives you more room to lean back. And then maybe the left arm goes long. So think of it just like you were doing the Paragasana shape, that little lungy shape, but now you're standing. Now again, be very conscious of activating the muscles of this left leg. Now you can keep the arm extending or maybe you bring it to your hip, start to lengthen your right leg. Notice how you have to kind of tuck your right hip under and lengthen out your ribs. Give it another breath, your gaze can be high or low. Now here, soften back in towards the right knee. Just letting the left arm come down, shift, bend your back leg for a moment. And then let yourself come around over your front leg, coming towards a lunge, and then lowering the left shin down. Oop, sorry, buddy. I was trying not to startle them, and I startled them anyway. So we're going to come up a little bit higher, hips over shoulders, and you might need to cushion your back knee. So I want you to think about reaching back for your left foot with one or both of your hands. More so you can get your chest lifted and even. I'm only doing one hand, so I can keep heading tight. <laughs> Give it a breath. If you think you can, maybe lean into it a little bit. I know I don't have much room to do that myself. And then from there, just letting the left foot come on down, take your right foot, wiggle it over, just coming towards half pigeon. But not like end of the class half pigeon, we're still in it. So try to keep your heart high, unless that's just not okay for you. And you can totally have a block underneath you to even off your hips. This is a shape I actually find relatively easy, which I don't say that in a braggy way. I mean, I have to kind of work at it to activate because of the flexibility I do have. You know, I can just be here without thinking about it a whole lot. But in this position, if I'm keeping my chest lifted, if I'm squeezing my left leg, if I'm really activating my right leg, I do have to think about it. If I lay forward right now, I could literally fall asleep. Give it another breath or two. Now from here, roll to the right a little bit. Swing your left leg around. Now I'm going to turn to face towards you so you can see. The left leg just coming forward. And then you're either going to come into double pigeon, which is knee to ankle, ankle to knee, or if you'd like, more like the cow face, cow face pose, knee pile. You could always sit on your block here to make this a little bit more comfortable. And then your call, you can stay upright or think just like in the figure four, heart forward, tailbone back. The thing I like to do to make this a little bit deeper is 
cross my arms in front of my knees and try to reach towards my feet. And honestly, sometimes I can reach my feet, sometimes I can't. The interesting thing is I can reach my feet right now, but I can pretty much guarantee you if I had done this pose earlier in the practice, would not have happened. I do feel like there's scorching flames of fire in my hips right now, though. I just have a calm face. What do you think? Now here, when you start to come on up, just having fun for a second, reach down towards your left foot with your left hand and extend it. And then bring that right foot up and extend it. You don't have to hold your feet. You can just do regular boat pose if you want to, meaning you can float them. If you do have the feet, try to draw them in like you're coming into a deeper forward fold. You might even look up. And then from here, I'm going to do it casually because I don't want to kick tank across the room. But if you want to rock back and forth, chaturanga back, push up back, up dog, down dog, go right ahead. Or just simply lower your feet, do what you need to do, and come on in to downward facing dog. Give yourself a breath to pause. And then when you're ready, you're going to let yourself take the left leg up to the sky. Step the left foot forward, coming into warrior one. So grounding the right heel, <coughs> excuse me, and drawing the arms up. I finally got an inhaler last week and it's helped immensely with the coughing. I still cough occasionally, but not nearly as much. So now here, just working on that little bit of alignment, let both hands come down for a pause. Notice what's happening in your right leg. I'm hyperextended, I can feel it. So giving a tiny bend in the knee, and it's just weird, as soon as I bend my knee, I can feel my quadricep fire up, I can feel my glute fire up. Then, actively hanging on to that contraction, then if I want to try to push the heel down, it doesn't lock out like that. Then right hand can come to the left thigh, left arm can come up, you can keep it up. Or if you want, bring it to your low back. And just think of here, as you're just trying to pull your chest forward. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come all the way forward because it kind of depends on how tight your right thigh is. But if you also take your back toes, the right toes, and turn them forward more, it'll help you even off your hips. So today's practice is a little bit more educational, I guess, rather than just moving. So sorry if that's not what you were in the mood for. <laughs> Give it another breath. A lot of what I'm saying is also reminders for myself. So inhale as you draw the arms up to the sky doing the funky hand thing that I didn't know I did. And then exhale, let your hands come on down. Again, you might be coming towards your block, so we're gonna do that fun little twist from Trish. So you might shorten your stance, and just give yourself a moment before you can come into the twist, just to be where you are. Now, again, if this became super confusing last time, think right hand down, almost like you're gonna do a revolve triangle, but instead of picking the left arm up, left hand is going back to the right foot. And you can even stay here and just kind of peek under your right arm. If you feel like you have room, you can move your hand over to the left leg just to give yourself some more room. It's kind of like the pose we call egg beater, but just letting yourself roll open. Soften along your jaw. And then when you're ready, just let yourself come forward. Just take a second to unwind, let yourself come out of the twist. And then we're just gonna turn, let yourself shift up and over, bend the right knee, Left hand is down. You can bring your right hand to your thigh, just letting yourself roll open. And then as we come back over the left leg, we're gonna come on into warrior two. So moving the left toes forward, or warrior, warrior two feet, and then coming into side angle. So keeping the left hand down low. I sometimes will use my hand to help me open up the rib cage, kind of notice where I am in space. And then maybe you're reaching that right arm super long over your ear. Now here, you can't help it. Your left leg is going to work because your left leg has a lot of weight on it right now. Try to activate your right leg, the back leg, and see if you can wrap the muscle around the bone, giving it a squeeze. Gaze can be high or low. And then nice and easy, start to lengthen the left leg. You might have to change the height of your block. Go right ahead, I think I do. But tuck the left hip under, right hip over. Just super wicked long on the side of your body. Give it another breath. And then when you feel ready, you can start to let yourself soften back in towards the knee. You might take a moment just to inhale, come on into warrior two. And then just exhale, let yourself 
Bring the hands down, lower down the right shin. Lengthen your front leg just for a moment, just because after being weight bearing, it's gonna feel good. And then as you bend in towards the knee, adjust your legs as necessary so your hips are more over, or your shoulders are more over your hip. And it's so you can pull the right heel in towards your glute. Now you can use one or both hands, letting yourself have some space to open up the chest. So we're gonna do a leg variation eventually in pigeon, but I'm going to regret, because I honestly don't think I've done it myself in probably a couple of years. Oh, look at how we are leaning forward. Ooh, uh, it's terrible. Okay, so here, let your foot. So one advantage of doing this stuff on the video is you see yourself, and you know, as much as it's not my belief to have mirrors in the yoga room, they can be helpful for alignment. Sorry, bud. So now, again, I want to stay a little bit more active in the half pigeon shape. And you'll understand why shortly. But trying to keep your chest a little higher. This is why you might find sitting on a block is actually better for you here. And if you're not sitting on a block, you just have to very consciously activate your legs. Meaning squeezing through your thighs. Because if you're just letting yourself sink, you're not going to be able to keep your chest up. Or at least not evenly. Give it like two more breaths if it's okay for you. I'm not sure if you can tell, you can't tell in the picture, but Baby Yoda is hanging out with Ganesha. I figure they're both removers of obstacles today. Now, as we get ready to bring the right leg forward, I'm gonna turn again so I'm facing towards you. You can either bring the right foot forward and come in towards the double pigeon shape. And I didn't say this on the first side, I apologize. If you wanted to, if you put a block between your knee and your leg, that can help a bit too. I'm going to do the cow face pose because that's what I did on the first side. So that's when your knees are a bit more stacked. And you can always put yourself so you're sitting on a block if you're really suffering here. And then it might be enough to stay tall. It might be interesting to lean forward. You can let your hands come behind you to help you deepen it. Or you might take your arms in front of you. And really the arms in front of you here isn't necessarily meaning you're going lower. It honestly is just that you're actually using more of your body weight to sink into the hips. Soften along your jaw. And then here, when you start to come up, again, right toe, right hand, draw it up. Left toe, left hand, draw it up. You could do a straddle. I'm choosing not to, so I'm not being obscene to the camera, but you could be in a straddle version of both. Lift the heart, maybe gaze up. And then if you want to find down dog, you're welcome to. I'm gonna cut short there. So letting yourself rock and roll, up dog, down dog, however you'd like. And then you're gonna be taking your left leg forward just for the sake of not doing the same leg right away and coming forward into half pigeon. But two things you might need before you get too far into it. You might want a cushion for your back knee, which I'm going to use because I'm probably going to end up off of my mat. And you might end up wanting a strap or something of that nature, depending on how deep you want to get into your shoulders. So left leg forward, right leg back. Now, the other thing that'll help a lot, and I know it's so funny because people are usually really stubborn about this, just put a block underneath your left foot. It'll make your life so much easier because for the version we're going to do, you have to have your heart lifted. If your hips are really low, unless you have a super bendy back, which I know there's those of you out there, it's going to be super difficult to bring this right foot up. So just take that into consideration. So what I'd like you to try to do is to pull the right foot up. Oh, like I said, I haven't done this in a couple of years myself, so my body is not excited about it. Left hand, left thigh, lifting up the heart. Now some of you, and I know it's not going to happen for me. You might even want to bring this around your foot and come around into more of the king pigeon version. But this is about as much as I can handle at the moment without screaming. So just letting yourself be where you are. Soften your jaw, scissor through your legs, even if you're sitting on the block, because I could feel myself because I wasn't really scissoring my legs. I could feel my low back starting to seize up a little bit. Give it a breath or two. And then here, release the Kraken, the back leg. 
and then bring your right leg forward. You can do down dog if you want. I don't. <laughs> and then right leg forward, left leg back. And again, just maybe have a cushion for your knee. So I'm reading a book called The Soul of the Octopus, which is really cool because I didn't realize how ethereal of a being that they are. I mean, they look really cool, but they're really cool. And then again, heart really high. So you might notice on this side, I can lift my chest higher. And that's just because in general, I'm a little stronger on this side. I mean, I'm saying my right leg forward, left leg back, but it's actually the other way around because this is mirror image. And my right leg is actually my dominant leg, which I know I'm right-handed, so it may or may not be totally related. It probably is related, but you have a leg that's a little more dominant too. And then you reach back towards your foot. Wonder both hands or maybe grabbing the strap. I can barely stay on it. <laughs> And then, ah, oh, well this side's better. Okay, lifting the chest. There was a day long, long ago that I used to be able to hold my foot from the top and put my foot on my head. And you know what, I can't anymore. I probably could if I really wanted to, and I could if I really tried and practiced and worked at it for a while. But you know what, I don't care so much anymore. So, <laughs> I just don't want to be broken. Give me another breath. Now here, as you let yourself unwind the leg, again, down dog might be a spectacular idea for you. I'm just kind of sliding out of it slow. So my plan for the next pose is frog. So if you want to do it belly on your back, belly up with your feet up on the wall, that's a nice way to do it too, so your knees are supported. I like the traditional, so taking my knees wide. Sorry, buddy. which he's had that so much he probably doesn't care anymore. But they're gonna trim his nails. His nails haven't been trimmed in a really, really long time because he doesn't usually need them because we walk so much, but we haven't been walking this far. I know. Because he's had to see. Oh, where are you going? Over here, come right here. I know, we're gonna go outside in a minute. Sorry, if you're just tuning in, it's because he's blind. He's okay. He just... The good news is he walks around very cautiously, so even though he just bumped into the wall, <laughs> he was very quiet. <laughs> he still knows where his treat drawer is, though. So here, I'm just talking to you to kind of keep in this pose a little bit longer. You could be in happy baby right now if you'd rather. I'm just giving yourself a couple more breaths. Now, you're actually quite open for a back bend at this point. It may not seem like it, because I know I haven't done a ton of stuff with the shoulders, but that was kind of on purpose. Your legs are super active and strong right now, which is one of the things that I think we tend to lose connection with when we are doing back bends. So we're going to do wheel, we're gonna do, well, we're gonna do bridge with prep for wheel. And then if you decide you want to do wheel, you can. But if you decide you don't, you can just keep your hips lifting, but shoulders on the ground. So ease out of frog however you need. Ease out off if you want to. And then come on towards your back. Bring your knee back. Oh, did I walk right by it? Okay. very fortunate he's not a fresh belt. He didn't do anything fresh just now. He just looked for me. <laughs> so tucking your shoulders under and then, hey, you're in the way. Over here. Tucking your shoulders under and lifting up your chest. And then if you'd like, hold on to the edges of your mat 
And then just start to lift your hips, your ribs up towards your shoulders, away from the ground. Now, if you're happy here, stay here. If you want to start to feel the activation in your arms, press into your triceps and fingertips up to the sky. This is that Christine Rapper brought this to me, I think, like 10 years ago. But it really, it helps you feel that lift, and you can kind of scoop your chest up higher. Now, you might be feeling maxed out. I'm not quite sure if I'm maxed out or not. So I'm going to try it, and then if I don't feel good, I'll come back down. But if you'd like, bring your hands by your ears. Start to press up. You can pull it to the top of your head, and then really start to lift up. And I'll confess, this used to be a shape I loved. My body doesn't like it quite so much anymore. So ease down to the back of your head, roll shoulders, ribs, hips down, and then you might just want to come into Baga Kanasana or Happy Baby, just something to release your low back. For the second time, I'm going to do bridge, but with my legs super close together. You could do wheel too, just know if you do wheel, it's going to be really wobbly because you don't have as much of a base. So this time, bring your ankles, your heels, your feet as close together as you can, your knees. And this is a friend, my friend Steph taught me this one. Then just start to lift your hips, but I'm trying to keep my legs together. So it's going to activate my inner thighs and my glutes a little bit more, and I'm finding it helps stabilize my knees. It's also making me activate through my outer hip, my T band. You okay about that? Okay. Oh, buddy. Come here. Come right here. Come right here. Come here. And another breath. Sorry if he's distracting. And then slowly lower down. Good boy. Take your right ankle over your left thigh, just when you're ready to. And then back into that figure four shape from the beginning of class. And the interesting thing is it might feel more open or it might actually feel tighter now because you've been working everything so much. And then just let your legs tilt over to the left so your right foot can come down. And then this time, instead of holding the ankles, maybe take your foot more towards your thigh and let the knee drop forward. So it's going to give you a little bit more through your outer hip. And then come through the center. <laughs> and then just unwind and recross with your left ankle on top. And then again, knees into the belly for a moment. And then you can just let your legs tip over towards the right. And this time, just let the left knee drop forward. Hi, Bella. Windshield wiper your legs. Oh, good boy. And then from here, just whatever position is going to make you happy, coming into something that's restful. So you might want to go into legs up the wall or just legs straight up in the air. If doing a handstand or a headstand is actually comforting to you, ooh, crazy here, letting yourself have the space to do so. and see what I end up on reading to you. So just giving yourself a moment to pause, maybe just being still on the ground for a moment. This is actually from a year of living your yoga, which I didn't realize until I just opened it. it was given to me in January of 2007 because Judith signed it for me. But today, February 2nd, it says each moment has the same potential for wholeness. Wholeness is found not only in the special moments of being lost in an exquisite sunset or feeling the perfect balance of stillness and meditation. Every moment of your life can be just as whole if you allow it to be so. Today, find the treasure in the most mundane moments. How did it go? So just giving yourself the space, you know, maybe as you go through your day, and just letting yourself be in any moment. Hi, Annie. And then if 
you're comfortable and you want to stay laying on the ground or whatever position you're in, stay there. Enjoy. Let yourself take a few moments to pause. Pretend you're still moving and doing yoga so then that way maybe you can get some extra time to rest and no one bothers you. But I hope you got to enjoy today's practice. If you did actually do it, you probably want to drink some extra water because a lot of hip opening can make you feel a little cranky later. And um, I know for me, I was trying to detox out some of the negative energy in my body, but you know, giving yourself the space that whatever you need today to take it and let it be wholeness. So namaste, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed having Tank here too. I know I did. <laughs> Have a good day.